So as you guys know, we actually have a Mystic Summon event coming up where you can actually choose on a banner what Moonlight 5 star you want to go for, except for 3 units that I've released to recently. We're basically going to be separating these options into a tier list for you guys so you guys can see what units you guys should go for, and also you guys will be able to see why I recommend these units because I'll be explaining to you why they're good. So we're going to separate these units into four tiers, including a not available tier. These units are not available because they released too recently. But the four tiers are going to be the best options tier. This tier obviously is going to be the best option because they're just very powerful at what they do and are very meta. Next we have a decent tier. This tier is also full of decent units, but just not as universal and you know freely picked as the best options tier. Still very powerful, but you, you'll see that they have a little bit more limited of usage. Then we have the niche tier. These units will be rarely picked into some situations, but in those situations, they'll be very, very powerful. So you want to make sure that you don't ignore these units. Some of these are very good in the right hands, but for the most part, you probably want to stay away from them because they won't be as you know frequently used as the other units above them. And then we have the not worth it tier. These units are just not that great and are needing of a buff. So starting off, we have the best options. And if we look here, Starting off, we have Conquer Lilius. Now, if this was strictly for PvP, I would definitely rank her a bit lower because of the fact that there's more soft counters out there to her. But I will always say that Conquer Lilius is one of the best, if not the best, Moonlight 5 stars you can ever get because she is super powerful in PvE content as well. And at first, she might not seem like she's that great, especially when you're newer to the game. But into late game content, especially like Ancient Inheritance, also for like Hall of Trials, which I cannot stress enough, it's so important to get a good Hall of Trials team going because of how many exclusive equipments you need. She's very good there. And also, of course, she is a very powerful unit in PvP. Next we have Navy Captain Landy. She's very strong in PvP, one of the best damage dealers, if not the best, alongside Abyssal Yufine, who's not available. And she's also decent in PvE, especially in Expedition. She's very powerful there. Next we have Delian, PvP only unit. But she's super strong in PvP, she denies soul gains, which makes her very strong against cleave units, and just a very powerful unit in general. Bright Witch Asaria, very good against evasion units, and against units with revive, and super strong for PvP because of her defense break as well. Why not Sermia, a very good answer to counter-attacking and extra-attacking units. Zeo, one of the best openers, if you're tired of getting cleaved or speed contested, you can actually pick Zeo, put him on about like 260 speed, and you'll outspeed 310, 315 openers. Lone Crescent Bologna, one of the best damage dealers in the game right now because of the fact that she can always crit Navy Captain Landy and she's very bulky, and because of the fact that her buffs made her super strong and super hard hitting. Death Deal Ray, a menace now after his buffs, best control unit in the game with injuries and a ton of damage, and also buffing his team, which makes him super annoying with that sleep as well. And then Spectre Tenebria, very strong unit for PvE and PvP, just very powerful because she has that permanent stealth. And we also have Last Rider Crow rounding out the best options tier because he is such a staple knight. He has a ton of mitigation for AoE with his S2. He can hold any knight artifact that you need. And you also have him dealing a ton of damage with his S3 while being a knight. So it makes him very strong. So those are the best options, I would say. You might be wondering why some units like Meteor Cowric and others are not here. We'll be talking about that once we talk about the decent tier, though. So now we're in the decent tier. Martial Artist Ken, very good after his buffs, very good into Navy Captain Landy, and just units that really have a lot of crit. Strays, very good in PvE for hunts and one-shots, also very good in PvP as a um, counter to slow teams because you can one-shot units, very frequently paired with Architect Laika. Meteor Calrix, the reason why he dropped is because there's a lot of two-turn debuffs now, especially with Death Dealer Ray, and it feels like Meteor Calrix it doesn't really feel like he has too much of an impact on the game right now. A lot of people play around his S3, they don't really debuff on the first turn. And you're going to notice that he plays too slow. And when he doesn't really S3 and just sits there waiting to use it because there's a counter on the other side, you're going to see that he doesn't really get as much value as other units because, you know, for example, Conquer Lisa's S1 gets way more value than Meteor Calyrex. Also, he gets countered by um, turn cooldown increases. So like Lua and Nog will completely destroy him, which makes him pretty hard to play. So there's a lot of openers that deal with him very well, and he's very weak to aggressive teams, such as like Stray's teams, Architect Laika teams, even Savior Aiden, a 3-star unit, completely destroys him because even though he has a lot of health, uh, Savior Aiden can pretty much deal 80% of his damage and make him die the next following turn, so you have to keep that in mind. 
Spear Guy Selene, after her buffs, she's very good. Uh, mostly going to be used for Guild Wars offense, but in RTA, you can pick her into teams that don't have extra attacks or you know extra damage. Very strong pick. Urban Shadow Shu, the best injury dealer in the game. She does a ton of injuries. She can ex not explode them, but she can do more damage with the injuries she's inflicted. And she has AoE injury, which makes her so good into certain team comps that have a ton of health scaling bruisers. Next, we have Ambitious Tywin. I think he is a sleeper pick. Um, honestly, I kind of low-key wanted to put him a little bit higher, but I think this is a good spot for him. He has a lot of crowd control. He can actually take your souls. He has defense breaks, makes him very strong. And you never know what type of A Tywin you're fighting. You could be fighting a full tank one on Aureus. You can be fighting a damage one. You can be fighting a bruiser one. You can be fighting an effectiveness one. So it makes him very scary to fight in RTA. Uh, he's only used in PvP, but, and especially only used in RTA, World Arena. But in that area of content, I think it's a pretty solid pick. Mig Chloe, she's a pretty decent unit, just solid. Very good Soul Weaver with attack buff, pretty decent healing for her team and revive. Um, you have to kind of build your account around her, which is another topic, but still a powerful Soul Weaver, and I'd say that her buffs are just unmatched. Architect Laika, like I mentioned, very commonly paired with Strays because of her opening capabilities to one-shot a unit with Souls. She gets countered by Bellions, so you have to keep that in mind, but still a very powerful unit. I think she is definitely worth picking up if you like to play aggressive and you like to actually uh, not cleave, but punish slower teams. Remnant Violet, always a hit or miss unit, but when he does hit, he's amazing. He can sometimes be the, one of the best units in the game, other times be like the worst, but I'd say he's more consistent than he is inconsistent, and he is a good counter into like certain units, especially like LRK, um, Bellion, right, just tanky units that don't have a lot of ways to take him down because he has a lot of sustain with lifesteal and he has evasion and does a ton of damage with his S3 and his S1. Sylvan Sage Vivian, just a solid bruiser unit. Uh, I would say she's probably somewhere around here, to be honest, like the end of decent or the top of niche, um, but she is just a solid AoE damage dealer, pretty good into Spectre Tenebria, and she can actually um, tank a lot of damage with her passive. Just keep in mind, she is... A little bit weak to extra damage, so Icarina, Rimuru, units like that will definitely counter her. And for the most part, I wouldn't say she's like blind pickable a lot, but she's still a pretty solid damage dealing unit. And then rounding out the decent tier, we have Dark Corvus and DJB Desert Jewel Bazaar. So Dark Corvus, gonna be used into slow teams. Kind of similar to how you want to use Remnant Violet, although Dark Corvus is a, li a little bit more safer, I'd say. But he is gonna take longer to actually ramp up. And in Guild Wars, he is a monster. He can pretty much take down most teams with the Soul Weaver next to him. DJB, Desert Jewel Bazaar, mostly going to be used against barrier teams. You can pick him into like LRK, you can pick him into Payra, which he's very good against. You can pick him into anything with barriers, and he'll be a very solid pick there. And he does have a CR push, which, which makes him a good opener. Just keep in mind, he doesn't really do anything outside of his S3 and his barrier inversions. Um, kind of like a one-trick pony, but in those situations, he's very, very strong. Then we have the niche tier, so I'm not going to talk about these units and why they're bad, I'll just talk about what areas of content you want to pick them in, because they do have some good uses. uses. So first we have Pyro Captain Flan, against slow teams, she can lock down units, uh, typically against like APOC Ravis, just like slow bruiser units that do a ton of damage but are very slow, she can lock them down. Requiem Rowana, very good with Cleave. Solitaria of the Snow, very good against units that use Focus, because she prevents Focus game. Um, gain, and she's a very good control unit. Sage Ball, anti-cleave unit. Closer Charles and Commander Powell, both cleave units, but very good there. Astromancer Elena, good at, again, um, countering counter units. She can stop counter attacks, which makes her very good. LQC, Little Queen Charlotte, very good against dark units. She can one-shot them and splash damage. Apocalypse Ravi, good injury unit. That's all she is, I'd say, nowadays. You don't want to pick her into units that apply injury, otherwise she's useless. Specimen says... Still needs more testing, honestly, but a pretty good cheesy evasion unit now that can actually deal with uh, teams that don't do a lot of damage because of its one-shot potential with its S3 and S2. But he does need some setup around him with stuns. He's on a little bit, mostly going to be used against Cleave because of her cleansing and her passive to actually cut. Faith of going to be used kind of similarly to uh, Pavel and Charles in a Cleave team. Very good against units that are weak to turn cooldown increases, such as Meteor Cowrick. Archdemon Shadow, very good as a last pick bruiser unit in RTA, or even in Guild Wars against very slow, uh, not hard hitting teams that are very weak against Seal. So unit, so teams that have a lot of units that very rely on their S2 heavily. And then the not worth it tier, 
not going to talk about these units too much because they're just not good. They need, really need buffs. I think Smile get really missed uh, the nail here when they're trying to buff them or when they have tried to buff them. So hopefully they do give them some more love in the future. And then of course the not available tier and these units are not available because they released way too recently. So yes, if you guys have any disagreements with this tier list, let me know in the comments down below. I'm always interested. And as always, good luck on your summons and I'll see you guys in the next video.